So tobacco in prison is like the number one hustle, and I'm gonna break down all the ways that inmates smoke or chew or consume tobacco in prison. A whole video about cigarettes, Jessica, really? Yes, really, it's important in prison world. <laughs> if you guys are new here, hi, my name is Jess. I'm a person in long-term recovery who has in fact been to prison. If you guys wanna follow me on any other social media platform, TikTok, Instagram, Patreon, that's $2. It's only ever gonna be $2. All of that is linked down below, as well as my vlog channel and my Facebook page. Shout out to a local lesbian for uh, sending me this hoodie. It is so freaking soft. I love you so much and I love your energy and I really appreciate the hoodie. Like I could sleep, I don't know why I'm doing this, but it's so soft, I could sleep in this thing. I will link her new small business, congratulations, and her TikTok page in the description box. All right, without further ado, let's kick this thing off. So when it comes to making money in prison, there are a few things that you can get and just rake it in. And tobacco, top of the list. Obviously stuff like drugs, cell phones, shit like that, that's also gonna make a lot of money. But since we're specifically talking about tobacco, I wanna tell you all of the ways that inmates can smoke or chew. If you don't know, smoking is banned in almost every prison. There's like a couple of prisons in the United States that you can still smoke cigarettes in and even buy the cigarettes on commissary. And then if you wanna quit, you can get the uh, the Nicorette patches from medical. I believe New York is still doing that. Y'all will have to fact check me, but in most facilities in this country, they are smoke free. I mean, they're not, but like the rule is, <laughs> the rule is you can't. So the number one like easiest way to go about getting cigarettes or tobacco is to have a guard bring it in. And this takes a little bit. You know, it takes a little bit of time and manipulation on the inmate's part to get an officer to bring in the cigarettes. What they'll do is, because it's obviously a legal item that they can just buy and then come in, they'll just bring it in and they'll drop it in your cell or they'll put it in a place where they know that an inmate can get to it and they'll scoop it up. So that's like the easiest way, but again, it takes time, manipulation, money because the guards can bring in a pack of cigarettes that cost 10 bucks and then charge whatever they're gonna charge. I could live off one pack of cigarettes for a long time. Now, I personally am not a smoker. Smoking a vape these days should be stressful out here. When I was doing time, I was never a smoker. I'm gonna smoke green, not tobacco. So for me, the best thing that I could do is get tobacco somehow and sell it. And I could live off one pack of cigarettes for a long time. When I say live off, I mean I would get a ton of commissary and I would sell the cigarettes and my locker would be stacked. I would have everything that I need. The top priority for an inmate is hygiene items. We need toothpaste, shampoo, conditioner, stuff like that because pr the prison does not provide you with shampoo. In my personal experience, and I can't speak for every facility and every person that's done time is gonna have a different experience, but in the facilities that I've been to, they don't just give you shampoo. They give you this teeny tiny little piece of baby doll bar soap. <laughs> like what am I supposed to do with that? I'm supposed to wash my hair with that? That's not gonna happen. They give you a comb, a little tiny toothbrush, and a little tiny tube of glue. Um, I mean toothpaste. It, it doesn't make your breath even smell good, and it tastes horrible, and it's like the smallest little thing, and yeah, not great. So we use that as glue for stuff, like putting our pictures on our locker and stuff. But our focus is survival, so how are we gonna get hygiene products? How are we gonna get money on the phone? How are we gonna get food? How are we gonna get stamps and envelopes and paper to write home or to write the lawyer or do all these things, right? It takes money to be an inmate. You have to pay for everything. So the number one way, have a CO bring it in. The second like most common thing, these are probably not in order at all. I'm gonna watch this back and be like, really, that was number one, two, three, whatever. Um, but the second most common thing that I saw was guards spitting out their chew, like in the trash can, and then inmates getting it, drying it out, and rolling it in Bible paper and smoking it. I know that's like really offensive to some people, but smoking anything off Bible paper is really common in prison. But you know, let, let the big man, let the big man judge for that. <laughs> there are worse things going on than smoking out of the, the blank pages of the Bible. I'm just saying. I was always so afraid of getting something like staff or MRSA or anything. I wouldn't get jailhouse or prison tattoos because I was afraid of getting hep C or just, I don't even know. I've seen people get boils after like cutting their arm a little bit. So I was always so terrified. There is no way in hell. There is no way in hell that I'm gonna take chewed up. Do they chew it or they just like put it in their, I don't know the process of chew but I'm not gonna take that out of someone else's mouth. Like, I don't know you, man. I don't know where you have been. I don't know where that mouth has been. And then dry it out and smoke it. No, 
Uh -uh. For me, when it comes to tobacco, if it gets that bad, guess what? We quit today. Tobacco is a very hard thing to kick too, right? But just for me personally, it was never that important to me. So like, I would rather die. I would rather die. We're talking about H all day long. And I'm sure there are people that think like the other way because they're really addicted to nicotine, right? I would do anything not to be sick. There was even one time, this is so random, this is not about tobacco, but I, I'm like thinking about these addictions, but there was this time I was on a Greyhound bus and there was someone drinking out of a water bottle and he had like maybe this much left. So like, just like spit at the bottom of this water bottle. It was water, but you know, people backwash and I asked him for it and I shut up on a Greyhound bus with that water. I'm so weird about germs that like, even if we're in a whole ass relationship, even if you're my child, like if you, if you grab my fork and eat off my fork or like try to take a drink out of my drink, I don't want it anymore, you know, but in active addiction, hey, I'm gonna do whatever I have to do, right? So it's crazy how it changes your mindset for everything, it changes who you are. So moving on from that, another really popular way to get tobacco or really anything into prison is by putting it in, um, your purse or suitcase, your prison purse or suitcase is either your butt or your hoo-ha and taking it from county jail to prison. I was always too scared, always too scared. If I'm going through the intake process, okay? And if you guys don't know, there is a process called squat and cough. <laughs> I would literally die if I'm like doing it and like a bunch of like tobacco shot out of me, you know? I would literally die just right then and there. Like, just please kill me. <laughs> I saw someone bring in close to a pound of tobacco. Whew. So it's a whole process, even just smoking it because it smells, right? And like the guards know what it is. They know that something's burning. They know that you're smoking, whether that's weed, cigarettes, whatever, they can smell it. So the process of like trying to smoke and get away with it is not that easy. So you have to make something that's gonna like smell like, like an air freshener kinda, but you can blow the smoke through it. You can flush the toilet really quick and the smoke is gonna go down it, but you're gonna smell it. So there's a bunch of different ways to make the cell not smell like cigarette smoke. If you're in the cell, you're gonna be like, oh, this is great. It smells like Irish spring. We're good. It smells like baby powder. We're totally fine. <laughs> but if the guard is not a smoker and they walk into that unit, they walk by the cell, they're gonna know probably. Some of the CEOs just didn't give a shit. Some people let it rock, some people didn't. Uh, but it was always like kind of funny to see all of the things that people would go to to try to get the smell out. Like it's Irish spring all over the walls and like <laughs> flushing smoke down the toilet. Like it's crazy. And I would watch all of this happen and I'm like, that's a lot of effort. Like. <laughs> I'm way too lazy for that. I am way too lazy for that when it comes to tobacco. Now, if someone has some weed, oh my God, all day long, I'll spend hours. I'll spend hours on an air freshener if it meant that I could smoke a joint and a prison joint is like a pinner. Like it's this tiny little like itty bitty micro joint that gets everyone hella stoned because more than likely our tolerance is like zero, like less than zero, like negative numbers. And that tiny little bit of dust <laughs> that we can get in smoke, that pinner is expensive. So the time it takes to get it, the effort it takes to get it, the money that it costs is just off the freaking chain. So I was waiting to go to prison from county jail one time and their intake room was small. The jail was relatively small as well. So they just had this desk and like a computer on the desk. And when you're walking up through to go to intake for whatever you're up there for, uh, you could see the desk, like it had like shelves. I'd be standing up there for whatever. And you know, people are, the cops are swishing all around you. Well, there would usually only be one CO there, but if that CO left, they almost always kept cans of skull like right there. And it's four feet away from me. I'm taking it, you know? And that was always like, so I would wait until they got a little bit busy if I was lucky enough to have them, you know, walk away from the counter and I just, you know, and steal it real quick. That one thing of skull, my locker was stacked. <laughs> There's a rule when you're locked up that stealing is okay as long as it's not from another inmate. So you can steal from staff, you can steal from the COs, nurse station, whatever. You cannot steal from another inmate. And you would think like, y'all are criminals. <laughs> You're all criminals. I'm sure there are plenty of people in here for stealing, but like you can't steal. No, we don't steal from each other. It's us versus them. And if someone catches you stealing, whew, you're gonna get your ass beat. If you've never been locked up, you'd be like, uh, stealing is stealing, what's the difference? No, 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 two different teams, us versus them. We don't steal from each other. At the end of the day, nothing is worth going through all of that effort 
to get some shampoo. You know, stealing skull and having to sell it to the other inmates just so that I could wash my hair, nothing is worth that. It is really hard to be locked up, but when your main focus is survival, and for all of us it is, Man, it puts everything into perspective. I am still to this day, and I've been out for a long time, really grateful for the most basic shit. Just to be able to turn off the lights when I want to, or go to the fridge and get a cold bottle of water. Clean water too, because there's been brown water. You know, I'm still really grateful for all of the small things, walking outside whenever I want to, not having to rub my walls with Irish spring to smoke a joint. You know, so it's the little things. <laughs> So to me, nothing is worth it. My freedom means everything to me. So please don't ever think I'm trying to glorify prison. I'm just trying to tell y'all what it's like. Let me know in the comment section down below if you would go to all that effort to smoke a cigarette or a joint, or if it's worth it for some shampoo. <laughs> I'm gonna end today's video here. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe, stay in recovery, whatever that looks like to you. Prison straight up sucks. <laughs> and I will see y'all in my next one. So you have to make something, um, shit, what is it called?